It's raining outside, I've got coffee and we're going to be talking about Kickstarters today. See, the problem with Kickstarters is sometimes you're left with nothing. You pay them and then they just disappear. Unless it's a big brand because in that case it could be a win-win. For the brand, it's great. They crowdsource the production. They literally take your money first. They fund the production of the product. The good part is you actually do get a product. And if it's a good product, that is a win-win. Remember the Edifier Neobuds Pro? That was a huge win for a lot of people, especially the early bird prices. Well, today we're going to be talking about these two. This is the Opera 3 and the Opera 5. And they are Bluetooth IEMs from Soundpeats for their Kickstarter program, which depending on when you're watching this video might have already started or is about to start. I'm going to tell you the good, I'm going to tell you the bad, and then we're going to hash out whether it's really worth you buying or not, or who it's good for. Let's get something out of the way. These are no different from any other Soundpeats earbuds in terms of app and features with the exception that they have LDAC support. If you take a Mini Pro HS, which I reviewed just last week, these have the same feature set. It's the same app, it's the same EQ. Actually, just on a side note, why does the EQ change? Like, you've got the same EQ for every Soundpeats earbud, but every time they change the frequency bands, like, for the life of me, I can't understand why. But I digress. You've got the ability to turn off single touch to avoid missed touches, and that's it. There's no multi-point, there's no in-ear detection, and there's no ability to pull connection from one device to the other either. So then, why does this exist? Well, there are two major differences between this and every other sound piece ever. Number one is the form factor, because here's what you do. You take a Mini Pro HS and then you blow it up and you get these. The Opera 3 and the Opera 5 both are the exact same shape and pretty much the exact same size, if I'm not mistaken. And they're basically the Mini Pro HS, but bigger. But the effect of that is twofold. Number one, when it's in your ear, and I know what you see on the box, this is not what they show you, you look like this. Now I'm gonna put a word at the bottom of the screen and you will never be able to disassociate this image with that. I, I think we can all agree this sticks out of the ear quite a bit. Now, the effect of that beyond the obvious is that it picks up a lot of wind noise. I'm not talking about just running or jogging. I'm talking just a fast walk even picks up a lot of wind noise. And that's a problem. To get rid of that, there's no wind noise reduction. The only thing you can do is turn off ANC, which works, but then you don't have ANC. Luckily or unluckily, that's just as well because the ANC performance is really not good. It's there. It takes away some of the bass frequencies, sure, but it's not great. And what adds to it is the fact that getting a good seal is a little bit difficult because these are very, very shallow insertion tips, which is fine if you're a small or a medium, then just upsize the tips to a large size and you're fine. But if you already are a large size, well, they don't add any XL size tips in here. So you're going to have to buy a third party tip to get that good seal because otherwise the ANC is really going to be useless. So now you might ask, okay, it's big, it sticks out of your ear that much and it doesn't have good ANC and it doesn't have any sterling features, anything that differentiates it from everything else. So why? Well, there is one trick left up its sleeve and it's a strong trick to be fair. Sound quality is where the Opera 3 and the Opera 5 differ, not just from other Soundpeats earbuds, but from every single earbud you have ever heard in this price category because these are multi-driver IEMs. Before we get into that, there is a little bit of a difference aesthetically. This is a sort of a little more uh, yellow, gold and black, and they've really doubled down on that. This is, you know, it's, it's a strong look. That's the Opera 5. The Opera 3 is a little more rose, gold and gray. So there's a little bit of an aesthetic difference. Nonetheless, the biggest difference between them is that the Opera 3 uses two drivers, a dynamic driver and a balanced armature. And the Opera 5 uses three drivers, two balanced armatures and a dynamic driver. And I can tell you the minute you put these on, you've heard nothing like it in this price point. The quality in terms of detail, in terms of nuance is off the charts for a Bluetooth IEM. Don't get too excited now. I'm not gonna get into wired IEM territory just yet. It's not all roses and butterflies though. Here's why. In terms of tuning, Soundpeats have done what they always do. There is quite a bit of emphasis in the upper mids and the treble and because of that, everything sounds a little sharp. And even then, yeah, there aren't too many Bluetooth, actually there are no Bluetooth IEMs I've heard between $100 and $150 that do something a triple driver thing does. So yeah, they definitely stand out. But the tuning is still a problem. Those highs are harsh. The treble does get a little too ambitious and it's just, 
it's just too sharp especially if you're listening to something like transformers like the action movie with a lot of action sequences and there's a lot of crunchy metal going on yeah that's gonna get really sharp really fast but that's not my biggest problem oddly enough that usually is but in this case it's not see the problem is with the bass reproduction when you're listening to pop and hip-hop no problems but when you turn on some heavy metal some iron maiden some megadeth some orchestral music anything that has a lot going on at the same time for some reason the bass almost disappears i mean it's there it, there is some detail there but the mid bass thump just goes away i don't know what it is i don't know if the driver is overwhelmed i don't know if it's the crossover between drivers that's been placed in the wrong position i'm not going to pretend to understand why it happens but i do know that it does happen and that is a huge problem because to me the one redeeming feature of this is the sound quality and it was all great until i realized that it can't handle all the genres out there so the question for you is very simple what would you give up for sound quality and would it be okay if this didn't do justice to a lot of tracks in a lot of genres that are particularly heavy mind you non heavy genres have no problem these sound amazing with respect to the tuning like i've said in my previous sound peaks videos i believe they can be doing a lot better but you don't get multi point you don't get in ear detection you don't get any smart features you don't get any customization no new features whatsoever except the fact that it has ldac and except the fact that it has multiple drivers and even then on certain tracks certain songs certain types of genres they don't do that good a job i think it's a miss from soundpeats but the question is if they give it to you at 60 or 70 dollars at that price would you be willing to sacrifice all of that for better sound quality in the genres of music that you might listen to. Now, if you are interested in buying this, I will try and EQ it to be a little more refined. I'll try and put those EQs out on my Discord so join the Discord, but other than that, hopefully you'll hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more coming this month. I'll see you in the next one. Stay happy, stay peaceful, stay colorful. Namaste.